If you are separating or getting divorced and are thinking about instructing a solicitor but don't know how to go about it, then this is the vlog for you. Hi, I'm Caitlin Jenkins, the family law vlogger. One of the questions I'm often asked is how to go about choosing a solicitor if you're contemplating divorce or separation. Most people, if they're contemplating divorce or separation, are in a very difficult stage. They're trying to make some very difficult decisions about not only their lives, but potentially their life of their spouse or partner, and also their lives of their children. And they need the very best support at that stage. It's often also a situation that people are very uh, unfamiliar with. It's usually not something that people have been through before. And so not only is it a very stressful and emotional time, but it's also asking them to make decisions in an environment they're really unfamiliar with. So how should you go about choosing a solicitor? Well, the first thing I would say is to do your research, just as you would if you were finding an expert on anything else, do your research. Often that means looking at the internet and looking at website profiles for people you've heard of. It could involve asking your friends or other people that you think have been through a divorce or separation. It's also worth asking some sort of trusted other professional in your life. So for example, if you've made a will with a law firm, ask them who they might recommend or if you have an accountant that you use regularly or some other professional who you think might know some good family lawyers, then that's a good starting point. The second thing I would say is make sure that you choose an expert. Choose somebody that doesn't just do a little bit of family law, but specialises in family law. Family law is a highly specialised area. The law is different to many other general practice type areas from criminal law to conveyancing, all of which are specialisms in their own right. But really good family lawyers those who really understand not only the law, but more importantly, the dynamics that are often involved in family breakdown and the priorities and the wishes of people to want to put their children first, are experts and have dedicated their time and their experience in learning how best to help families. Finding an expert can be a question of just asking around and seeing who is local and who has a reputation in the field. It can also be about checking out that reputation and checking out that experience. So, for example, a good starting point is the National Association of Family Law Experts, which is called Resolution. And if you go to the Resolution website, then that has a list of specialist family lawyers. And those who have signed up to the Resolution Code of Practice have agreed to put families first and understand and acknowledge that family law, litigation or otherwise, is very different to other forms of civil or commercial litigation. The next thing I would say is try and speak to the family lawyer themselves. Most family lawyers will uh, take a call or respond to an email if you explain your circumstances and say you'd like to set up an initial call. So the, you then need to speak to the family lawyer concerned. And really what you need to look at, I think, are three things. First of all, do you get on with the person? Do you like them? Do you think they understand you? Are they listening to you? Now, don't confuse that with necessarily somebody telling you what you want to hear. Family law is often about telling people things that are very difficult to hear and understand. But does the family lawyer talk to you in a way that you think you're being valued and listened and they're understanding what you're trying to achieve, even if they're then giving you some advice that you might find quite difficult? Secondly, think about the practicalities. So availability. Sometimes it's geographically important to be close to your family lawyer. At other times it isn't. It's better to get somebody that you feel you understand and deal with things by telephone or Skype and the odd meeting as necessary. So make sure the practicalities work for you. Being transparent with our clients about costs is very important to us at Mills and Reeve. Clients are in a difficult situation. They need to understand what a particular aspect is going to cost them, or at least they need to have an estimate, even if it's not, in, not possible to give a full, uh, precise figure for costs, because there are often many uncertainties, particularly at the outset, as to how much something should cost. But they should at least, a solicitor should at least be able to tell you, for example, how much an initial meeting would cost. And at that meeting, they should then be able to tell you what the cost implications even if in broad terms or with broad estimates of various different options open to you. So at least a client goes away with the range of options because the range of costs is also relevant then to the choice of option that the client chooses for trying to sort things out. And a further point I would say about choosing solicitor is it's very important to see whether they have the expertise, not just to deal with family law generally, but to deal with your particular area. So for example, if you have very complicated pensions and they're going to play a very important part of the discussions about what you do with your finances, you need a family law solicitor who's experienced in pensions and the vagaries of the law that applies to pensions on divorce or separation. 
The same point applies, for example, if you're a business owner or if your spouse or partner is a business owner. You need a family law solicitor that isn't just a generalist, but there's somebody who really understands businesses and how they work and also how they might be treated by a family court or what creative solutions there are for dealing with a family business or a business that has been built up during the marriage as part of a divorce settlement. The same point applies to other complicating aspects of, of divorce uh, or separation arrangements. For example, if you own various properties or you have international assets, or for example, you have trust interests or other sort of slightly more complicated financial arrangements. You need a family law solicitor who has expertise to deal with those aspects. It doesn't just deal with matters generally. Overall, therefore, when you're choosing a solicitor, you need to do your due diligence, find out a bit more about them, speak to the family law solicitor, understand more about their expertise, both generally and in relation to the key issues that are likely to arise in your case, and make sure that you understand what the cost implications are of instructing them, even if just initially, and then how transparent you think they will be about the costs going forward. As always with the Family Law Vlog, if you want to get in touch with me or one of my colleagues at our Family Law team at Mills and Reeve, our contact details are at the end of this vlog.